What is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Louisiana Outdoorsman. It is our final morning here in Gulf Shores and we are on our way to the pier. Actually we're driving up to the pier right now. It's almost 6 o'clock in the morning. Like I said it's our last morning. We haven't done so good in the past few afternoons that we've fished. The, the one and only time we fish in the morning we limit it out. I'm hoping the same thing happens today. We only can stay to about 8 o'clock because we have to go back to the hotel. Uh, shower up pack up and head on back home but like I said we are driving up right now so hopefully we get the same results as the other morning and I will catch you guys once we get on the pier and get to fishing stay tuned alright guys I do want to apologize in advance for the situation we have at hand here um, the culprit of this audio problem was literally an eighth of an inch that my microphone was unplugged from the adapter um, I actually had this problem in the first video you guys watched. Um, I kind of figured it out now, so I'll make sure that that's plugged in before we start um, filming any more videos. But as you can tell, it is early in the morning. The Spanish didn't start biting until we got until that sun broke the horizon a little bit, and it was able to uh, you they were able to actually see the bait. Um, this first fish of the day was actually a really good one. Um, compared to the Spanish that we have been catching this past week and as you can tell my wife is actually on a Spanish as well this is the first double up of the day and actually the second double up that we've had the entire trip um, during these morning hours the Spanish bite is fast and furious as you can tell both very nice Spanish um, I'm gonna get mine unhooked here real quick put it in the ice chest and I'm gonna get hers unhooked and put it in the ice chest as well like I said you want to be there right as that sun breaks the uh, horizon because once the Spanish can actually see the bait being that they are predatory site feeders, um, that is when you, that is going to be your best opportunity to catch these Spanish. Um, like <laughs> if you could actually hear the audio in the video, I was counting them in as I was always and you guys know when I'm talking about when I put fish in the ice chest, it is put them in the chest coach time. So that's what I did. Um, these Spanish are really slippery, so sometimes it is hard to get a grip on them with the pliers. Like I said, this morning uh, we only had a little bit of time to fish, being that it was our last morning. And I am super, super upset when I started to, to edit this video to realize that there is no sound at all. Um, except for the intro and a little bit of the outro, which actually has sound. Um, but like I said, we only fished for I think an hour that morning. Um, from about 6, maybe an hour and a half from 6 to about 7.30. But we didn't really catch anything from 7 to 7.30. Uh, we did catch a few smaller Spanish, uh, which you kind of see there. It's a decent sized Spanish, but I do believe I ended up keeping that one because I couldn't get it um, unhooked in a safe manner, should I say. I don't know why I say safe, but I couldn't get it unhooked in a manner where I thought the fish would live if I did let it go. Um, so I ended up just keeping this smaller Spanish. Um, so that's why you'll see that smaller Spanish because before this morning began, I did tell my wife that I did only want to keep decent sized Spanish that morning, um, which we caught probably about 15 total that morning. We only kept nine, um, but we did let go some of the smaller ones because I didn't feel like cleaning them. And I made want to make sure that the fish I was giving my father was of quality size and the Spanish that did come through that morning were pretty sizable to say the least for um, the week um, and the size of Spanish that we were catching for that week but like I said still early morning got really good hits that's actually a nice Spanish that I hooked on right here I thought it was way bigger than what it was uh, but it ended up being I think I foul hooked this one in the head when it swiped for my uh for my little straw uh lure there as you guys see um it's actually taking my pole for a ride um if you guys could actually hear the sound it was actually stripping drag pretty good and i thought i was going to need help bringing it up but i did not ended up getting it up by myself and, uh, and uh, slinging it over it is actually the one i did snag in the head um a lot of these fish you'll find out uh, being that they swipe at this uh, bait so fast that they'll end up foul hooking themselves um, a lot more times than normal. Uh, but he actually was about to come unhooked. Uh, I'll take this hook out very easily. 
<clears throat> I'll say very easily, it, it looked like it was about to come unhooked the way um, it was peeling the skin back on its head, but a very nice Spanish. I do believe I show it to the camera, maybe. Yes, it is a very nice Spanish, as you can tell, compared to all the other ones that are in the ice chest already. Um, as you can see, that sun is just starting to break the horizon, but it is still dark. I found it kind of weird that once that sun, the whole entire sun broke the horizon, but it wasn't extremely bright like normal. Um, it was a, a bit weird. And as the morning went on, I did notice that some of these Spanish were starting to bite a lot closer in, uh, being that uh, you probably get you guys probably can't see in the distance or under the water But they had a bunch of dolphins and sharks out a little bit further out um, Which are kind of pushing those Spanish up closer to the pier, which is why they were biting. This is actually another good Spanish It was back-to-back -back big Spanishes that I caught uh, Towards probably probably were fishing probably for about 45 minutes at this point um, Some bigger Spanish started to roll in once again snagged this one um, being that they were just swiping at it so fast, they're just missing the bait and catching that tail end of the treble hook. I caught this one on his either side fin, I believe. Um, and uh, like I said, these fish are just super, super fast and, and predatory fish that you do file hook them um, a lot more than what you would file hook a normal fish if you were fishing like catfish, redfish, all that good stuff. Quality Spanish, probably about a two pound, maybe two and a half pound Spanish. You can tell about the same size as the last big one that I had caught. So at this point, I'm just hoping and crossing my fingers that we come across a group of big Spanish that are rolling in. Uh, unfortunately, it, it didn't happen. We did catch a few more Spanish, um, but they weren't that size. But they were still anywhere from a your pound and a half to two pound Spanishes or your perfect eater sizes. Um, your bigger ones definitely do um, get a little, I find they do get a little dried out because you got to cook them for so much longer than normal. But that's just my preference. So, as you can tell, um, I think this might be the the second or third to last Spanish we, uh, we, we did catch that morning. Um, they were, like I said, quality size Spanish for this morning. If they would have all came in like that throughout the week, I would have been perfectly happy. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I am extremely happy that of the Spanish that we did catch, especially that one morning where we did limit out. Uh, it was just a fantastic trip. I, like I said, we didn't fish all that serious this trip, being that it was me and my wife and we were just actually enjoying our vacation. We were doing other things besides fishing. When me and my dad go, it is strictly fishing all day long, sun up to sundown. Um, but I will say this trip um, was a brutal heat trip. I mean, it was a struggle. Um, as you can tell, my wife, this is the second double up we've had. I just didn't want to wait to unhook my fish. Um, she had a blast. She actually, I believe, caught more fish than I did uh, total this trip, being that the morning that we did limit out, she caught probably 60 to 70 percent of the fish that we did catch that morning. So props to her. Um, I always enjoy fishing with her. It is a blast, and she enjoys it just as much as I do. Um, as you can tell also, with that that little view right there, we are using the same type of lure that I did last time. It is just the uh, bubble with the water to make the splash with a 50-pound mono leader down to the little uh, sunglass holder straw that you guys seen in that um, little clip right there, right over a treble hook. Um, as my neighbor decides he wants to come around and blast his motorcycle. Um, like I said, that is probably the best bait um, besides maybe the gotcha plug for Spanish mackerel that I have found. Um, and as you can tell, my rod is not bent that much for this fish. It is a smaller Spanish. If I'm not mistaken at this point, I let this Spanish go because I'm pretty sure to my right my yep there we go my wife do is the third double up of the day which we haven't doubled up this many times in a while um so i believe i do believe i'm pretty sure i let mine go being that it was pretty small and it wasn't hooked very good so i figured i could let it go um without it being damaged in any way and that it could survive if i did let it go yeah i am gonna let it go um being that it, yeah it was barely hooked so it was easy for me to get it off and uh that fish did live at least I thought it was, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, 
as I leaned over the railing to make sure that it did swim off. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get her Spanish off. Now, don't get me wrong, if that Spanish did not live and it started to float in the water, what I do is I grab my rod with the gotcha lure on it and I will actually snag the fish back and reel it back up and put it in the ice chest and keep it. I do not let fish go to waste um, at all. As you can tell, that fish definitely would have not made it. I literally <laughs> ripped his lung out uh, being that it swallowed the hook. But that is going to be the last fish of our Gulf Shores pier fishing trip. I hope you guys enjoyed and here comes the outro. Basically in the beginning of the outro what I'm saying is as you can tell, we are on the interstate. Everything is packed up. And we are ready to go, and I will let the audio kick in from here, and you will hear the rest of my outro. As you can tell, short. Went. It wasn't half bad for us. Um, we ended up catching. I think we kept nine total, um, but we caught somewhere around 15 because we did let a lot of small ones go. I didn't want to keep any small ones this morning, so um, the ones we did keep were quality Spanish the, this morning. Wasn't quite the morning I expected as it was the previous morning when we limited out, but all in all, it was a lot less I had to clean since we had to leave early. Because uh, we did leave at like 7.30, 7 7.45 that morning, or this morning, should I say, and uh, to pack up and be able to check out the hotel and everything like that. I hope you guys did enjoy this series. Um, it is a three-part series, one more part than the last one when I went with my dad. Uh, so, but I will be giving all my fish to him, being that he loves him some Spanish mackerel. And uh, hopefully I can get back some good old-fashioned Louisiana fishing when I get back. So, as always, stay tuned for another episode of Louisiana Outdoorsman.